Howdy, everybody. How are you all doing? It's good to see you back. It's another week. Sunday's the regular live stream day. I'm Jack. That's Ben over there in the corner. And this week is going to be about one of my favourite, but yet most cringeworthy films, which is, it's enjoyable to watch for entertainment. For entertainment purposes, absolutely brilliant. But for logic-wise and for reality-wise, will this ever work in reality? Is this even a thing? And... Obviously, you guess by the thumbnail and the title, but when it comes to like when it comes to like suits like this, when it comes to um, armor, which is being um, developed in the army and also for the police force and so on, yes, we're going to be talking about Robocop. Basically, what happens, like Ben said just now, what would happen if Terminator became a police officer? So, yeah, it's the thing is with Robocop, the biggest issue I find with the entire thing is how much of a budget did they have for just one guy, not an army of them, which would make more sense, but it's just one guy to save and essentially make him into a Terminator that's police-badged. Yeah, so like we're going to be talking about the whole things, like the whole cost of like developing a project like this. Is it even ethical? You know, what would happen if such and such happened to him, which we'll get into a little bit later. Um, but the first thing that I want to now want to get into, obviously, it's the question which everybody wants to talk about, which is the money. How much would a robo suit program and a suit like this cost? Because it's not just the cost of the suit or whatever itself and the technology; it's the cost of running the thing as well. How much would it cost a year? All mm. that kind of stuff. So after like a careful bit of research, I came to the uh, kind of conclusion from looking um, at a few sources, which, funny enough, there wasn't many, strangely. Um, but through sources, um, there was a few of them which kind of reckon it was around the um, proximity of like five mil, five million, which seemed a little bit low for something like this. But after a lot more research into the 2014 film, it roughly comes to about a cost of about 1.3 billion or 1.4 billion, if I remember correctly. Something which, along those lines. Which is not exactly surprising, considering you've got a suit like this, which is basically keeping a, well... It's not even Anakin Skywalker syndrome. No, really. it's yes. literally just the lungs, the head, and the heart. That's all that's left of him. Oh, and one hand, which I don't see the point well, in that. The thing is, that's the original film, but in the modern one, there's a scene where it's just literally him as a head, a pair of lungs, and a heart. That's all that's left of him. Yeah, that's the yeah, that's the 2014 film. But, we... <laughs> but it's well, just the only thing is, like for a suit like this, like I want to get to a key part of this in the film, which there's a line when he first uh, wakes up in the whole suit and everything, and um, and the doc and the doctor's character Gary Oldman asks him um, if he can walk around and so on, and he walks around and everything. And he says he can feel all this. Which how the heck can he feel the actual suit itself when he has basically no nerve endings, no muscles, no tendons, nothing? He shouldn't hmm. be able to feel a thing. Now I know there's going to be the BS excuse that, oh, it's all connected to his brain. Yeah, I get that. But the brain is such a complex thing. Like, there's parts of your brain which control your motor functions and so on. But the point is you need actual muscles for those signals in the brain. So, as you are saying, it's about... There's the scene where he's first walking around and he can feel everything. But it doesn't make any sense having to be able to feel anything because he has no nerve endings which don't connect to the brain. So therefore he wouldn't be able to... Unless they make artificial ones, because I think recently there was some sort of study in Japan where they had created artificial nerve endings to yeah. help people with damage like fr frostbite and stuff like that. Yeah. But then again, that's another thing to add on to the cost in to try and link everything up. Exactly, yeah. So the other big issue that I have with the whole thing of Robocop is the fact that they put so much into it, but there's not a lot to him. Like, he has one compartment in a leg to carry an oversized gun that isn't even police-issued. It's a... Yeah. yeah, just a leg. Just one leg. But then it's like, well, what's the damn point? If anything with Robocop... It shouldn't be about like being able to storm in and like just end up being like a tank. It should be more as like a shield for other cops, so he could literally like stop other weaponry while the other cops go in and do their job. Yeah, for sure. I mean, 
if I were to design one, obviously, like, you'd have to try and make it a bit more police friendly. And I know it sounds really nerdy and really dorky, but you'd have at least the blue, the red and blue, like, flashing lights on the shoulders. So at least it made it obvious he was actually police. Because yeah. the entire thing, I don't think he has a badge. There's no. nothing on him that makes him look like police. He just literally looks like Terminator's brother that works for the law. <laughs> yeah. So the other thing as well is like I know obviously like the majority of him is meant to keep him safe, but for such a big body that they built, you would think they'd make compartments or something for him to carry stuff for other officers. Yeah, you think. Or even the there's no protection for like the because when the visor comes down or when the visor's up, this is completely exposed the face. So what if he gets a shot to the face? He's done. Well, that's what I'd never understood as well because I think the whole reason why they designed him is because they created tech already that was meant to like take over from police, but they they found that it wasn't too humanizing. So that's why they did what they did to him. Yeah. But then it undoes itself when he's got most of his face covered because I unless you. Because the thing is, he's, what, good six foot, give or take, when he's in the suit. So he's quite a tall guy. So, like, not many people are going to be able to see that he's actually human. Like, from the majority of it, it just looks some really, really... Exactly. I mean, I know that there's, um, obviously, there's technology that's out now for people... um like amputees and so on where like the stuff that they're doing with prosthetics you know from with um, electronic prosthetics is incredible you know oh, so, yeah. like there's some which i've seen a few documentaries which are powered by like your phone and like you can, can and like you choose like what kind of grip you want stuff like that and it interfaces with like your muscles and so on it's bloody clever how they do it so i don't believe it's completely impossible out of the realms of possibility but going from that just prostate limbs to robocop is one massive stretch it's a hell of a stretch because especially when he doesn't have much of a body that's biological anyway yeah especially because you only have like the heart and lungs and obviously obviously all that blood to like power the brain but obviously they messed about with his brain at some point in the film because um because they're able to shut down his suit, which does make sense in a way. But at the same point, I think they must like, there's a point where he's obviously, they've implied things in his brain where he's able to control the suit and so on. But yet he, there's an interface um, where he believes he's in control and he's making decisions. Whereas a matter of fact, someone else is making decisions for him, but he believes mm. he's in control. But then there's the whole thing of, is this, is Robocop really ethical in today's world? I would argue no. Like no. at the end of the day, there's no way. And if there were, if they kept the idea of the what you said with the subtle programming, there's no way it's ethical because no. it's more of a gun for hire than it yeah. is a police officer. Yeah. And the other thing as well is like there's that big scene, the original one, where they got the whole board members, and one of them's done something wrong, but because of the like, backdoor programming. He can't get arrested by Robocop or have anything done to him until he's fired and then he gets thrown out the window. Yeah, because then you have the ending of like the most the most recent Robocop film where he's not where he's not able to shoot I forgot what his name was. He's like the boss yes. of the corporation. Like he, he's not able to shoot him because technically he's not actually done in like technically up to that point he's not done anything wrong and hasn't got a police record. So no. You know, it's just like these are the little bit of the pisses, like going Robocop would just it just wouldn't work for me. No, like it's too much of a hassle. It's too like as I'm just thinking, does he just stand there and like sees a guy with a hammer next to a shop window and he's not able to do anything as of yet, and as soon as he smashes the window, he just pelts straight at him. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing I said to you the other day was that in the modern movie, obviously now there's Wi Fi and there's stuff like that. He's able to access people's personal details without a warrant. So legally, even then, it's more of a, a very foggy issue to try and comprehend in these days. Because and then obviously it's invading people's privacy and so on as well. Exactly. It's... Yeah, it's... but then it's just if you take like the whole Wi-Fi issue, obviously you only ever see him in one city. He doesn't go anywhere else. No. But only thing is, if he's able to even go a quite a significant distance away from where he's meant to be, like the police station or wherever he's at, 
Does that mean that around the world, or at least around America, he's got like the world's strongest Wi-Fi? I mean, I would assume so. Like, he'd have to have like reasonable because <laughs> he's got like incredible hacking skills, and he's a police officer. But yeah. obviously, it does in a sense like there is e they call it ethical hacking, I think, or something where like they use. Ethical hack. <laughs> yeah, it's like this bizarre logic where that sounds the, like a ver that sounds like a very dodgy backdoor to me. <laughs> behave, nothing but, like that. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like the FBI and other agencies do use this term of ethical hacking when it comes to ca getting source of information on yes. people when they're doing stuff. Yeah, but it's a bit of a iffy issue when it's a one man army. Because at least yeah. when it's ethical hacking, it's like a team of people that are trained in doing so and only do it to find specific things. But then there's but only when... one cop that can do it within seconds. Yes, but it's also the fact that he doesn't even know what he's looking for. He's just looking in general, which makes it yeah. even more of a broad thing and more of a very iffy issue. Because then I try to figure out how they can come into the idea of any of his stuff that he actually comes across, how does the evidence process work as well? How because do you mean? Well, because going on tangent, you've got like Judge Dredd, where everyone is literally police officer, judge, jury, all in one go, and that's how the thing is processed. But with Robocop... Ah, uh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Robocop is almost on the same level as that, but he's not. He's still just a police officer, but he does... Well, it's like in the original movie where like the bad guy gets caught, he gets fired, and then he throws him out the window. How is that yeah. a legal police officer like thing it to do? Like the only thing is, like, can you even can you even arrest Robocop? Well, <laughs> no, but is, like, if, can he like is he even able to consciously deviate from his programming? You know, that's not really edged on. Well, the other thing as well is, like, what about police brutality? Because, obviously, him throwing the guy through the window. Yeah. What can you do to a guy that's literally a walking tank? Like, yeah, like, nothing. No, no, this is it. Like, you can Because you, the only thing you could do is turn the... Just literally press the on-off switch and put him in the storage bin. That's, yeah. That'd be I mean, it. That's, that's the other thing which we were, we were going to touch on. We're skipping through these things, obviously, because we want to get all this um, kind of condensed, so... Obviously, you have a short video and you can comment on it as well. But talking about power, how is he even powered? Yeah, because I don't think it was ever covered fully in the original movies. No, it wasn't. And, I mean, back in the 80s, everything was nuclear. Like, every big oh, thing yeah. was always a nuclear thing. So if that was the, te the, um, the concept... How radioactive would he be? Because the amount of material that you would need to try and cover him so he didn't kill people with cancer. Yeah. But it, that's another big cost to add on to things. Exactly. I mean, you've got like, such a powerful battery. But then again, like from what, like, from what you were saying, like when we were chatting earlier, when, by the way, we were chatting when I was at work, everybody. Um, <laughs> but yeah, when um, like we were shooting messages back and forth, you know, if you just want, like, for him to be powered, obviously, he would have to have, like, a single maybe cell battery in um, in his body somewhere, some kind of battery. But then again, with the amount of power and everything that he must use up, as how much power must he oh. use up? Like, it's impossible to regulate. But then, do, wouldn't he have to have, like, a team in a car following him around to keep him, keep him charged up? Or is he solar-powered? Well, solar -powered? well work? I wonder if he's solar-powered or whether it's... Be <laughs> I want. I mean, that would be... It wouldn't work in the UK. We barely have enough sun as it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. He would be the slowest cop in the world. You're <laughs> under <laughs> hey, let me just get out of my job. <laughs> but the other thing I said to you, and I'm sure people will probably laugh at this, but I think Tesla are trying to design the idea of Robocop because the amount of electric car ports that you can get now, that's how Robocop probably charges up. He just yeah. literally... <laughs> just... <laughs> halt! You are under arrest! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, this is it. Like, how could you... I mean, obviously, with modern day tech, the size of batteries have shrunk down immensely. Oh, yeah. Like, these batteries on our phones are like 
so much more capable compared to batteries 30, maybe 30 plus yeah, years ago. Because, like, I remember just like even when like our parents were like younger, because even my dad was like telling me back when like phones, like first mobile phones were yes. really popular, there were these great big brick things. And like for those, you had to actually have, you had to charge up the phone for something like, I don't know, 20, I think it was like 24 hours to have like 30 yes. minutes of actual yes. like phone call, like of. Yeah, so then, so I'm just wondering, like, because the, the whole battery idea, the, this is the bit which, yeah, there's people like us that come along and like uh, destroy your suspension of disbelief because we want to get into the whole nitpicky side of things. But this is it, like, going back into the 80s, I think probably those big phones were probably the only thing that had decent batteries. Yeah. Hello, Jake. Welcome to the channel. This is Ben. That's Jack. Hope you enjoy us ranting about random sci-fi things. Um, so, yeah, back in the 80s, obviously, those phones were probably one of the few things that actually had like decent power to it. So with that in mind, that explains why he's so bulky. The entire body's full of those batteries. <laughs> that's what it is. Because <laughs> that's the only thing I can logically... That would be a hell of a good thing. They could have done it in the original movie. It's like he opens up his chest and he has one of those mobile phones. He's like, I'm calling in uh, a case number 0015. And it's like, okay. Yeah, it's just like, what have you got? Port for your iPhone? Like, USB? <laughs> but, and then there's going into like the whole like USB thing, actually. It's something you just jogged my memory. You know, like with Robocop, you have a scene in the beginning where he's getting all of his, um, where he has to have like knowledge of like, crime and everything so basically the whole i cannot remember what it's called the whole kind of network and everything like crimes uh people who are wanted you know stuff like that and it's all downloaded into yes. like his all downloaded into his brain and for that you basically got a one-man wrecking wrecking crew there's no need for any other police officers as he's got like all the info into his mind so that's going to put like an entire workforce out of right out of work this is it i mean the other thing as well that there there's so many things they could have done with him but obviously it's trying to find the practicality of it as i said earlier like normal policemen would need a warrant to do certain things yeah could you imagine if robocop had like a built-in printer so he could print out warrants as and when <laughs> it comes out of like like a little port in his chest or something see i was thinking somewhere else but yeah, but I know what you mean. <laughs> Basically, you have a front end and a back end. That's all I'm going to yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> Review <But> like... error. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, there's so many other things about Robocop that just boggles me because there is so little practicality behind the whole concept. What was What were they trying to achieve other than making it a little less dystopian because the whole point was they had those big mecha things and they were meant to be like privatized bodyguards in a sense but because they d weren't deemed humanizing enough that's why they did the robocop thing but yeah, then robocop I... isn't even human enough because he's barely able to be human no that like that brings me on to like the next thing as well because obviously like alex murphy he ages just like any other person he ages like the rest of us Yes. So this is what I'm trying to bring up. Say, like, so obviously, because like they're going to want to keep a guy like that around if he's so efficient at what he does, like the best of what he does, one of his kind. But then again, I'm just going to bring up a little bit of a like medical issue. Say if like like you suggested to me he had a stroke, or what if he had like Alzheimer's or dementia, something like that. <laughs> yeah. You know. But it's just things like that. Like, would they have to maybe completely? Rem he would have to be like complete if. Like having somebody like like that, if like they had a mental issue such as that, or even had a stroke or something like that, how would Robocop even be able to function? And then that leads into the whole eth ethical thing again. Would they tinker with his brain more? Would they just remove his brain completely with a like artificial um, interface? I don't know. It's yeah, the whole I mean, ethical side of it. Because I think I remember in the original movie and the modern one is that they had to suppress his emotions because due to test subjects, it made them go batshit crazy yeah. because of the body couldn't cope from the stress of being in something that's not natural. Yeah. So then with that in mind, 
the actual brain itself doesn't live forever. His skin no. would still age. Yeah. It would get to the point where he'd only have the best part of 10, 20 years, give or take. Yeah. But then, even then, it's a bit pointless because... Like, well, well, he how... ages. Like, what are you going to do when he, are you going to have a Robocop that's no AP? Well, it's more to the point, like, you can't even... How do you have a retirement party for Robocop? Exactly. Does he <laughs> just, like... Or, like, does he just kind of go... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like wean him off and put him in storage. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what what are you gonna do with him? But this is it. I mean, I, these I are questions can't... which are just not answered. No, like there, he's designed more as a like full frontal force weapon. Yeah. But as I said earlier, he works. He would work so much better in concept as a defensive maneuver. So he could literally have, like, on the, his back, he could have pieces that fold out to make into riot shields or something. Yeah. Because so. the thing is, at least with modern day, they've proven that you can make material now so flexible but so durable that that's even a possibility. I think China was making um, fold-up riot shields ages ago. Yeah, and, but, I know, and I know the American military have been developing, like, different suits for, like, the army and so on that are, like, Tear resistant and stuff like that. Exactly, but this is why I find it so odd that they put so much money into one guy that's just a cop. He's not even a good cop because I think he was a he was what a corrupt cop that got shot down or something. Uh, I cannot remember. I can't remember exactly. In the twenty fourteen film, he got blo- in like he got blown up and like, next to his car, and he had like both. I think he had both his legs blown off, and he had one arm gone and one arm still there. But yeah, I think I think it was. I'm not too sure. I can't exactly remember. I think they kind no. of altered it in the 2014 film. I think where it was just a random attack. I think. Yeah, but like, unless it's like an absolute powerhouse of a cop that you can't live without, it's a waste of time and money. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at least if it worked for like the military, it makes more sense because they need to try and do the job as quick as they can to try and save as many lives. Yeah. But being um, RoboCop, like, well, what do you... It's like every day is going to be different. You're going to have so many people being corrupt or whatever every day anyway. Exactly. So, like, if you're going to, like, put all that time and money into something like that, then the police force or whoever are going to want to get rid of him very lightly. But, like, say what happens... When like his organs and everything, when he dies, what happens then? They're just going to like replace him completely with a machine, or what? I don't know because the other thing is then, like you say, if he's aging, he'd have to be replaced. But then, could you ethically replace him with somebody that wasn't? Uh... And it, like it's that the one of many other things as well. It's like how do you ethically replace somebody to be the next Roro cop? Because, like, cops die a lot, unfortunately, because it's part of the job. But, like, at the same point, you have to think ethically. Would they have to sign a waiver to say, I do or do not consent to be a robocop? Yeah, I mean, how do you go about that process going, right, I've got a proposition for you. (laughs) Imagine that conversation. Imagine being a fly on the wall for that conversation. Yeah, I mean, I just... There is no... I find it amazing that, like, in the film, his wife actually gave consent for him to undergo that kind of major operations. Then, but even in that sense, what kind of a life would he have outside of just being a cop? See, that's what or that always bugged me in that movie because unless you don't have any any significant other, it's fine if that makes sense because there's no one yeah, to but, like. But like Alex Murphy he had a kid and he had a wife. Exactly. So. The fact that his wife consented to the idea sounds like she's more like, ah, you can sod right off, I'll go find someone else. Like, because, <laughs> like there is, he, he can't have, really have much of a relationship anymore. But, no. like, he's still there, but at the same time, he's very, he's been technologically altered in his brain. I mean, the other thing that's just come to my mind, right, is, like, a big thing in America is that they like to do this thing in school where they bring their parents to school to show off what they do for a job. Could you imagine bringing in Robocop for the day? Like, hi, everybody, this is my dad. And then he just, like, randomly scans (laughs) all the kids. Like, he graffitied the wall. You will be... 
Or just like T Timmy Six stole a pencil. Like yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you just have like all these little kids, and it's like rap sheet, c um, criminal record, stole a pen. Yeah, graffiti. They look, yeah, they just look, and then like he like turns to the teacher, and the teacher's there like. <laughs> and then like you just like, you yeah. look at the teacher. And it's like DUI, 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 yeah, yeah, DUI. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like ah <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's like, you can have a bit where he scans to the gym teacher. It's like, child molestation. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there's no upside to being Robocop. No, I mean, they I make it horrifying. But at the end of the day, you don't know who you are. You don't even know if you're human. You're barely a person. The rain probably doesn't help because you seize up. You need to carry WD-40 with you all the time, just in case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because no, even, yeah, even just being, like, just being Robocop, you know, I'm going to go back to, I'm going to use a quote from Jurassic Park, which I reckon really does work well uh, from Jeff Goldblum, me and, me and Malcolm, just saying, like, it's all good, well, it's all, go all good and not, it's all good, it's all good whether they could, but the question is, should Should. They? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah, they can, but should you? Is mm. it ethical? Is it right? And like to do that to somebody who's basically like that scene where like the where he asked the doctor to see what he had left of his body because he didn't know. And you see every single bit detaching, like his legs and everything that he sees he's only got his lungs, his heart, his like tubes and everything in his throat and his head, his brain, and that's it. I mean like, another that's like, wouldn't that, like, well, obviously we can't even imagine, but that would just be traumatic. Well, that's it, because the other thing as well is, like, the amount of time and energy you'd have to put into reprogramming someone's brain, because it's not just, like, the standard things of, like, knowing, like, what where your body is and feeling stuff. It's also, like, the basic things of being human, like, being hungry. Like yeah, other sensations you know, like that, and he doesn't have like a stomach or anything anymore. No, but he, he, he would still feel the sensation of hunger and maybe wanting to go to the toilet as well. Stuff and like other that. like desires, like yeah. How do you suppress something like that? Because that just such... doesn't seem ethically right at all. No, I the thing that I find most bizarre in the entire arsenal of his weaponry is that his gun only has six rounds. Did they yeah, just run out of budget it. at that point? Like, was it just the fact that we, uh, we've done the entire body? So pointless. I mean, I don't even understand why he has to have such a big gun. No. Like, there was no point for that. Like, it, I it's mean, not. He's a... just arrest people with his bare hands, let alone a gun. Well, you could easily just make the hands into guns. Like, it could literally, like, mechanize into a gun. His fingers or something. Well, it could literally just like transform into like a pistol or something, and then you could yeah, have the rounds like up that. the arms. Yeah, but I just like there yeah, is you, nothing about yeah. this that makes sense. Because you maybe think it even in his like legs or something, you would have like maybe like maybe two or three guns in just his thighs or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Like, access or whatever. But then again, like inside the legs or whatever, surely for that kind of machinery, you'd have to have like pistons and some kind of mechanism to make that thing work. Yeah, exactly. But then, <laughs> I mean, I just had a thought. If they were running out of room for things, they could always send him off to Ikea because they're very good at storage. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, <laughs> just like make storage piles out of random not, bits. Yeah, like he's a bloody shelf. <laughs> <laughs> just Come like... to a Robocop shelf for, 19, for 1999. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just... Yeah, I don't but for know. me, like Robocop, it's cool for entertainment, but for real life, just it's a no. No, it's like by the time they've got anywhere around to figuring out what parts of his body's left worth saving, there isn't a point. Like, yeah, if like, anything, what if has, like what if he has a heart attack or something? Well, this is it. Like, this they give him so much like body armor and stuff, but then it's like the human body itself is not perfect. So no. at the end of the day. He could easily have a brain aneurysm or a heart attack. Yeah. Or could, like, what if he was made on the cheap and someone didn't tighten up the bolts properly? He sneezes and he just, like, crumbles. Like, he just falls apart like Lego. <laughs> yeah, and you just see, like, the torso just like, help me! 
<laughs> he's just like, oh, duh, duh, duh. Is he's just like trying to crawl along on his face, trying yes. to pull stuff along the floor, <laughs> or with his tongue like on the granite. <laughs> I mean, the other thing as well is, I think in the modern movie, they said that his body, it wasn't metal, it was 3D printed, or am I remembering wrong? Yeah, there's some, I think it was some kind of 3D printed alloy, something like that. Yeah, because there's a scene where they literally just get a standard shotgun and blow his legs off. I'm sure there is, unless I'm remembering wrong. But if that's the case, that's like, what's the spegging point? Like... <laughs> Yeah, and then just, like, with the whole things and everything they've done to his brain, obviously, like, they only had him for, like, the humanity. But, yeah, when they when they went through a training drill with him when he went to this warehouse and he was basically killing off all these robots that were basically trying to simulate a standoff, right? And, basically, he, Robocop's going around, Alex Murphy's going around, like, killing all, like, the robots in a simulated police standoff. But, yeah, you even see, like, Gary Oldman's character, like, say, like saying, um... Like saying what as he's watching the simulation because he's seeing everything through Alex Murphy's eyes and he's saying right now he believes he's in control he believes he's making these decisions but he's not we're actually controlling him and I'm mm. just like well, what's the point in him having being a more human then yeah like what's the cause... point just use a machine <laughs> what's the well, point <laughs> exactly because if anything you could probably make it so much easier and just have a hologram of a person's face over the robot so they have something to talk to. That makes it a little less creepy. But it's just a pointless idea. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it was in the original film. Like, I know it's a bit off subject, but didn't you like see? I think was it wasn't the only thing that was left of him. Like, just the brain and the brain, the eyes, and like just the spine. Yes, because well, I think so because I'm sure I've seen clips of it before where they show off like the test subjects. And they say that it drove them insane from not having their emotions suppressed. And you get a scene where one of them literally takes the robo head off. They've got a skeleton. It goes, ah! And it just dies from shock. Oh, I need to watch this. If you I'm find sh- a link, can you send it to me? I'm sure it's Robocop because I can't think of anything else 80s related because it was this. It had the same robotic things mm. in it. I'm sure it's Robocop. God, that sounds horrible. But this is it. Like... <sighs> Like I say, there are so many downsides to being Robocop. There is no... Po- if anything, it's literally in an American version of a Dalek. <laughs> yeah. Like, they... Because uh, Daleks have their emotions to, um, suppressed because the whole transformation to being put into the tank things make them go batshit crazy. Yeah. They have no clue as to who they are, what they are. They just only know that they have to kill. And that's the same with Robocop, is that all he knows is that he has to be a cop. That's literally it. Exactly. I just... So, like, is it cool for entertainment? Yes. Is it ethical? Absolutely no. not. <laughs> no. Absolutely but not. I think that's pretty much it for this week, unless you want to add anything else before we shoot off. Well, if there's any, well, if there's anything else, then I'll probably either shoot it down in the comments, just as a random question for people to answer, if they would like to in the comments. But obviously... For any uh, links or any kind of additional info which we may have missed, then you can always uh, pop them down below in the comments. But we'll also put some links of where we've gotten some of our information as well for this. Exactly. So short and sweet this week due to techie issues as not always, but reasonable times we have tech issues. Yeah, but luckily, luckily in future, as come Tuesday, I'll have my new broadband set up. So live streams hopefully be a bit more regular and hopefully will work properly. Exactly. So thanks again for joining us. It's not anything proper. We just rant and rave as usual. Share us with everybody. And if you've got any ideas, any theories or any topics you want us to talk about, drop them down below and we'll catch you soon. So stay safe and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.